I decided basically to just focus on the one car. It is the second to last car actually built by Allard, but it is the last car to leave the factory. A friend of mine named Bob Gervin is in the Allard, and the Allard has unbelievable amount of horsepower. Jim Freeman in the Aston. TV4 GT. We've had some good races and we're pretty even. Hey. I've been running here for 25 years. I've got thousands of laps around here. Every weekend it pays to spend some time in the car, on the track, just to get your rhythm back. But it's not like learning the track. It's just getting me up to speed, really. This is still a practice, but you do want to get in a fast lap because they usually take times, and that'll probably reflect where you start on the grid for the qualifying race. First few laps were to get some heat into the rotors and the pads. The brakes didn't really feel quite right, but I wouldn't expect them to be because they're brand new. I did uh, two or three laps fairly hot, working both the brakes and the tires to get the tires up hot enough to get the first heat cycle into the tires. The tires felt okay, although the pressures were down a little bit. Behind. Especially somebody that you know you're competitive with, just test them out a little bit. It's a mistake, really. I try not to do that. Nobody wins practice. Just focus on making sure everything feels right, get my rhythm up, get in at least one fast lap for the timers. to say that winning is nowhere as near as important to me as it used to be maybe 10 years ago <laughs> it was it was a much bigger issue for me and t today I I enjoy a good race even if I come in second or third if if it's been a good fight that's that's what it's all about I think that Steve wants to de-emphasize the competitive aspect of the event some people take this whole business too serious it really it is vintage racing uh, this doesn't lead to any career or contract or whatever. How do you establish the grid positions? <laughs> <laughs> All the cars are equipped with a transponder. There's a pickup in the track, so they record it automatically, and I guess it's sorted by computer or something. He doesn't really do lap times and post grids. Usually they, uh, they do give us a timesheet, but at this event they often don't. Uh, it's a Steve Earle thing, I guess. He keeps it a secret. <laughs> we take times, we know what the times are, we have you placed where you ought to be. They call it qualifying race. There's no qualifying, it's just um, random. They'll just tell us what to do. and I uh, have to do things with my wife over this weekend. I showed up on Saturday, they said that wasn't good enough. We've got lots and lots of people here. They want to see the cars, so you didn't show up on Friday. You start from the back. So 
Always guard from the back. by over the roof for uh, the Lotus 11. And Jim went by instead. <laughs> Where the hell did he come from? <laughs> Good, aggressive, very fast car. And I think he's on the Dunlop L's too, so we should be fairly even in that score. Maybe it's me. Maybe I just haven't put enough track time. white flag for the last lap. It means hang in there, baby, one lap to go. I just like to check them hot. I, I like about 42 PSI when I come in hot, and that's what I got. It would have been more fun if I could have stayed with Jim, but uh, in the Aston. Well, Monday. Maybe. I doubt it. He's, he's got the edge, it looks like, this weekend. A few other cars that I've raced have been so drastically different that there's no comparison. I had a Formula Junior, uh, 1,100 Fiat-powered uh, single-seater that I ran in the 80s for a while, uh, and then uh, five or seven years ago, I no, it was probably eight years ago. Uh, I bought uh, uh, one of these historic uh, stock cars, uh, an ex-Winston Cup car. I have no question when I'm over the limit. And typically, I try and drive such that if I do get over the limit for some reason, I've got an opportunity to recover. As a result, uh, uh, I've probably spun this car uh, twice in the last 12 years. Now, I've been sideways hundreds of times, but been able to recover. The worst thing I had was here at this same event four years ago, I think it was. I was leading Jim Freeman by 20 feet, maybe. Came through here, everything was just fine. I went on to no name, everything felt just fine. Entered the uphill and I had no left rear tire, basically. At first, I thought, yeah, tire's going down. A millisecond later, I'm saying it's down, and I'm sideways going up the hill on the rim with a shower of sparks. Uh, car rotated around. As I'm going up the hill backwards, Jim went up the hill frontwards beside me <laughs> and missed me cl clean. But I just hit this fender on the Armco on the outside, and that rotated the car enough so I hit the back corner. Uh, every year, there's some some part of the car is probably getting rebuilt, and I, at least once a year, do a very thorough inspection, looking for cracks or whatever, because we are stressing the cars much higher than they were ever intended to be. Usually. Crazy, isn't it? Six liters. Six liters? He's had it for 25 years. Pretty cool. Mark, what does that thing do? Cool his head? Yeah, looks like it goes up into the roof and picks up air from the rain gutter and blows air into his helmet. Mm. Cause that's what gets the hottest, your head. Bob. Yeah. Very slippery out there. Oh really? Uh, McCutcheon dropped oil in our race. Whether it got any better, I don't know. <laughs>
will be lined up in accordance to our finishing position yesterday, brought out onto the grid and stationary, then we follow a pace car one lap and get the green flag as a rolling start. One car that I've really had trouble handling is Jim Freeman in the Aston. It's a very, very good car, and Jim drives it very hard and very well. The big advantage there is braking. They can just stop way better than this car. Jim just seemed to have the edge. Times are good. Um, they're probably about middle of the weekend for me. Um, I moved up in the uh, positions in the race. Three laps turning into the left-hander. I went wide and I'm saying, oh, my arms that bad? I was turning and just not getting it done. Huh. But that's the answer right there. So that's kind of like lucky, no? I mean, yeah, but it's very just lucky. <laughs> very lucky. Just wouldn't turn. I just on a really wide arc like am i going to run out of pavement here or is this going to work last two laps I, I knew something was wrong but i didn't realize that was it but that fits the scenario the first it was a good run yeah jim still had the edge but we had a good run some of the uh, clubs will have a three-day weekend or something where they will devote one day and have the, what we call an enduro but that's probably only one hour they wild I prefer the shorter ones, the sprint race where you just settle down to put in 10 serious laps. It's decided within that distance.